U.S. automaker Ford is delaying the start of electric vehicle production at its plant in Oakville, Ontario, by two years. The plant was slated to begin production in 2025 and is now pushing that back to 2027. Some employees will remain on site during this time, but according to a company spokesperson, there will be layoffs. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said today that Canada will continue the transition to electric vehicles. Obviously, different companies will make decisions that make sense for them, but what we're seeing is an incredible adoption rate of uh, electric, uh, electric vehicles uh, and the manufacturing and the entire manufacturing chain that we're building up in Canada. Uh, we've continued to draw in investments from around the world and we'll continue uh, to be there to invest uh, in a strong future as those projects and those jobs are created. Brian Kingston is the president of the Canadian Vehicle Manufacturers Association and he joins me now. Brian Kingston, good to see you again. Good to see you. So for delaying the start of electric vehicle production by two years, there's thousands of jobs affected by this and supply chain implications. What does this move say about the state of the EV transition in this country? Well, the transformation is challenging. What we're seeing right now is automakers effectively creating a new supply chain from zero production level up to replacing all existing uh, uh, gas-powered vehicles on the road is the objective. And, you know, the, the government's goal is 100% EV sales by 2035. This takes time. It won't be linear in terms of the pathway to that 100%, but we have to take a step back and look at the progress we've made. In three years, we've gone from zero to over $30 billion of investment into automotive in this country, the majority dedicated to EV assembly. So we're on track, but there's going to be ups and downs in this transition. Okay, but, well, but this delay, this in particular delay, do you think this is Ford specific or could this be broader sectoral uh, a, a start of something that we may see at other producers here in the country? Yeah, I think we're seeing a, a couple of things happening more broadly in the automotive industry. First is um, supply chain hiccups. Uh, automakers are going through a once in a century transformation. Now they have to go from mining critical minerals to assembling electric vehicle batteries. This is a whole new technology. It takes time. There will be challenges. Secondly, the consumer needs to come along for the ride. And we are seeing challenges with respect to consumer demand for electric vehicles. It is increasing, absolutely. But when you speak to Canadians, when you speak to North Americans, they are concerned about charging infrastructure and they are concerned about affordability. We're in a high interest rate environment. Purchasing a new vehicle that is more expensive than a traditional gas powered vehicle is a challenge. So if we don't address those issues, you will see delays and some of the targets that governments have set will become unachievable very quickly. Right. Okay. I want to talk about that in a second, but just on this, I, I mean, this EV transformation, so important to the industrial policy of Southern and Southwestern Ontario. This is, you know, big bets made by companies and governments. A delay like this makes you wonder, okay, is this working as intended? I, I guess, should people be worried given the exposure taxpayers have committed to this and the importance of these sectors in the economy? Absolutely not. Uh, long term, this is the direction that industry is going. Electrification has proven to be extremely effective. And frankly, look, 15 years ago, the House of Commons put out a report entitled The Crisis in Canada's Automotive Sector. As people mm. were calling about the demise of Canada's automotive industry, look at where we are today with all of this reinvestment. Yes, there will be challenges with electrification, but we are in a far better place as a country and as an industry than we were just three short years ago. Okay, I want to get back to those targets. There is about a 30% sales target for 2030, if I'm remembering this correctly, but it is 100% by 2035. So they're not talking about linear growth in that five-year period. They want it to really jump. I think we're close to 20%, give or take, right now. I mean, can Canada hit the target with this kind of a delay by Ford, which would suggest supply challenges, and with the charging and other challenges you've outlined? Yeah, the targets that the federal government has set through their EV sales mandate right now are unachievable. They want to get to 20% sales in 2026. We've just crossed the 10% sales threshold, 60% mm -hmm. in 2030, and then 100% by 2035. But the government has not adequately addressed the barriers to EV adoption. We see it in survey after survey of Canadians and consumers. The price gap is real. Yes, it will go away as the technology develops, but we need strong purchase incentives to help Canadians switch. And charging infrastructure, if you can't charge your vehicle at home and depend on public charging infrastructure, we're going to need far more available to Canadians. According to our analysis, we need to see 100 public chargers being built every single day for the next 11 years. I see no plan mm. to make that happen. Does that have to be done by government? Can that be done by the private sector? Can that be done by industry, municipally, provincially? You know, is this, is this all on the federal government to do? Uh, no. Uh, there are roles for all players, including the private sector, 
but right now, if you look at the on-road Canadian vehicle fleet, we're talking about 3.5% of vehicles that are electric. So there is very little private sector incentive to invest in this because you're not going to have that many vehicles coming to your charging station. So in these early days of adoption, government does have a huge role to play. Not just the federal government, provinces too, and we've seen provinces unroll ambitious charging plans. Um, but over time, yes, private sector money will flow into this as people will see viable business models. On the incentive side, that's where government has to play a strong role right now. The price gap will come down as manufacturers invest in this technology, but it's not happening overnight as we've seen with some of the recent announcements. There's a $5,000 federal subsidy for buying an electric vehicle that qualifies. Uh, there are provincial subsidies in British Columbia and Quebec that are been proven to be quite effective in, in inducing demand. There isn't one here in Ontario. There was one, but the current government got rid of it. What do you want to see from the federal government in the budget on this? And what would you like to see provincial governments do if this transformation is going to take hold? We'd like to see a couple things. First of all, the federal government needs to commit to extend its purchase incentive. It will run out of money very, very soon. Uh, and it will run out of money, frankly, before the EV sales mandate comes into force mm -hmm. in 2026. That's not going to work. Uh, and then at the provincial level, we've seen provinces like Quebec recently announced that they're actually going to roll back their incentive. That's not helpful to this transition. So we need provinces to commit to this. Uh, every single province should have a plan to help consumers make the switch to electric, make these vehicles more affordable. Not forever, but in these early years, particularly when you have a federal sales mandate in place, you have to help Canadians switch. You can't mandate them to buy these vehicles. This is, uh, this, these challenges for this sector and this market is happening at the same time that people are pushing back at things like carbon pricing because climate as a priority has shifted down below just base affordability. We're seeing all of these announcements from federal ministers focusing on affordability, focusing on housing, and this is the direction where the public mood seems to be. How hopeful are you that you're going to see something to help with these challenges in a federal budget that seems to be primarily about one thing and it's a big one? Yeah, I'm, I'm not hopeful that this is going to focus uh, in, in the budget, but it frankly needs to. We have to have an honest conversation for the exact reasons that you've just laid out. This transition won't work if it is forced upon people. We need to win Canadians over with superior technology and a product that meets all of their needs and frankly is better than a gas-powered vehicle. But if we don't have the infrastructure in place, if it's more expensive, that is a very hard argument to make. And I worry with the government's approach on this by putting in place a mandate, it could actually create a blowback to the technology, which is absolutely not what we need, given the investments that manufacturers have made in this. I mean, I mean, sales are going up. The rate hasn't uh, continued at sort of the explosion rates as the early adopters got in. But, but I wonder, Brian, what kind of a message do you think uh, this move by Ford sends to consumers out there, right, that are thinking about making this like a sixty or $70,000 purchase and Ford is saying we need to slow down because of uh, we're not sure how this is going to go. I mean, do you worry about a, a dampening message coming out of that? No, I don't worry about that, um, simply because if you look at the models that have been uh, made available to Canadians over the past few years, I mean, phenomenal growth. We've gone, in 2012, there were two, three EV models in the Canadian market. There are over 80 this year, and manufacturers, including Ford, are providing a full range of electrified options to consumers. So this is happening. The models are there. If you want an electrified pickup truck or a small car, it's it's available. Uh, so, you know, I think Canadians should, should be reassured that they can buy an EV and they'll find one that meets their needs. Um, but if they don't have the corresponding supports on, on the, the uh, infrastructure and incentive side, that will be uh, a problem. Okay. Brian Kingston, president of the Canadian Vehicle Manufacturers Association. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That is not what we expected. It's not what we wanted. So we'll be working with the workers. We'll be working with Unifor and with Ford to put pressure to say, how can we squeeze that? Because, you know, what makes Ford Oakville so special is the people. Uh, it's the expertise, the talent, the experience they have, and that's going to be what I'm going to say to Ford. We need to maintain these people um, to make sure that for the next generation of vehicle, uh, the, the talent you have remains to build a new one. Lana Payne is the national president of Unifor, and she joins us now. Lana, it's good to speak with you again. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Uh, a tough day for Unifor, a tough day for your members. What does this two-year delay on production at the Oakfield plant, what does that mean for the thousands of people you represent there? Oh, it's uh, it's really, really tough news and a brutal day for them. Uh, you know, we had a, a plan in place, or at least a plan that we thought was solid, 
uh, for this plant. Uh, it had got reconfirmed in bargaining last fall. Uh, you know, we were looking at uh, producing EVs uh, by 2025. And now uh, we're looking at a, a massive delay here uh, of, of two years. Uh, so three years uh, from now. And that means a lot of downtime. Uh, for thousands of workers. Uh, so our priority will be, David, uh, to meet immediately with the company to make sure that our members, all these workers are taken care of during that, what is now a massively extended uh, retooling and transition period, uh, but also to explore any single possibility uh, to try and lessen and mitigate uh, the impact on, you know, 3,200 of our members right now. Okay, so it's 3,200 of your members who work directly for the plant. I, I mean, what, what would be the status for them now? Do they get layoffs until until um, the plant goes back into operations after the refurbishing? I mean, what is their employment status? What is their income status uh, as you know it at this point? Yeah, so these will be a number of things that we'll have to work out with the company, but they would have been laid off anyway because of the initial timeline. Uh, some would have continued to work to help with the retooling, uh, whether they were in skilled trades or, or whatever their classification in the plant. So not everybody would have been experiencing a layoff. And in that layoff, we also negotiated what we called EV income security supports in our in when we bargained with Ford Motor Company last fall. Uh, and that that would have guaranteed our members uh, support of up to 70% of their pay uh, during, uh, during the retooling and transition period. So now, obviously, we have to go back to the company and say, this is a decision you made. You have a responsibility to our members. We want to see uh, this support uh, that we negotiated for the original time period uh, to be expanded uh, so that our members are, are not... Uh, going on protected and without income during this period. Okay, so that income protection, I presume, Lana, would have run until sometime in 2025 when the plant was supposed to reopen because your, your collective agreement, as I understand it, only runs until 2026. And now the new timeline for reopening is 2027. So there's a lot of milestones in that period, which means a lot of work to be done here. Yes, there is going to be a lot of work over the coming days and, and weeks to make sure that we're getting clarity and certainty and security uh, for our members, but also pressing the company to look at other options here, David. Uh, we know markets change quickly. Uh, so being, uh, you know, be able to be flexible, to accommodate and do different things, uh, to leave no stone unturned in terms of how we can lessen uh, the impact on Canadian auto workers right now. Uh, they uh, were part of buying into this big project of being part of the EV transition. They still believe in it. We still believe in it. We know uh, that there have been some shifts in the, in the markets in the last six months or so, uh, but Canada needs to be on track uh, to continue to get a piece of this, this massive investment that's going on in the world right now. You, you say they still believe in it. You still believe in it. Do you th think they still believe in it in, in Oakville, given what we've seen today? Do, do you accept that this is just a delay because of market conditions, or are you worried it could be a, a shift in larger corporate focus and corporate priorities for Ford? Well, I mean, the reality is, is Ford is a big player in the EV markets already. Uh, I think they're number two in North America. Uh, they are committed to this, and we know that the markets are growing. They might not be growing as much as they were uh, in the last six months or so, but there is still uh, a massive shift happening uh, in terms of consumers uh, shifting to EVs. We're at, I think, in the United States, about one in five vehicles right now are electric or, or hybrid compared to just 4% in 2019. Uh, so, you know, the world is moving in this direction. There are government mandates around net zero. The industry has to do a, a transformation here, and Canada needs to be part of the transformation. And uh, we're going to continue to push to make sure that Ford Motor Company lives up to its commitment to our members. There are some operations that are still moving ahead with for 2026, I believe, in Tennessee. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, I, I mean, do you worry about a shift to the U.S. Uh, as a focus of operations right now? Or I guess what's your confidence level that this is still a core part of Ford's plan going forward? I don't think Ford Motor Company has a choice but to have Canada as part of its future. Uh, it has been making cars in this country for generations, and uh, it would be a mistake to, to stop making them. We expect cars to be sold in Canada, to be made in Canada. This is uh, something that we fight for as, a, as an auto workers union and uh, something we're going to continue to fight for. Is this a market challenge only, Lana, or is there a policy component to this too? I wonder, are there things 
in place or not in place at the provincial and federal level that, that could either help here or are part of the, the challenge you're facing in Oakville? Yeah, all kinds of things are occurring right now, David. It's markets, it's changing uh, policy in the United States, which, as you know, uh, the Biden administration has stretched out uh, some of the emission targets that they had in place uh, from 2020 or from 2030 to 2032. This has uh, caused, uh, you know, the companies to reconsider their timelines. Uh, obviously, we want, uh, you know, we want governments to think about incentives because we're at that next level of consumers now who need to uh, adopt uh, to, to, to EVs. And uh, the, the earlier adopters we've gone through, I'm sure the industry an analysts uh, would agree. And uh, now we're at the next, uh, the next generation. But there's also some technology challenges. There's battery challenges. Mm -hmm. This is a massive transformation. And, uh, and there are a lot of factors playing into this right now. So, so what has to happen next year, Lana? I know you've got 3,000 workers who are very worried and their families. And then there's the supply chains that feed into this plant. And we're expecting to feed into this plant uh, starting next year uh, when, when this original conversion was supposed to be in place. Uh, what are you watching for next uh, on, on this whole thing? Obviously, we have a number of facilities in Canada that will be going through a transition. Our job is to make sure that we're nailing down these companies as best as we can to be sticking with timelines. And if there are changes in those timelines, they have to come in and, and support workers through this uh, to make sure that they have the skills that they need uh, when they're ready uh, uh, to build these electric vehicles. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's not going to be easy. No transition is easy. Uh, but as long as uh, we're here protecting our members and fighting for them, uh, that, that's what we're going to do. Uh, continue uh, to fight for auto workers and a, a robust auto sector in this country. We heard just as a final point from Industry Minister Champagne today, who said clearly this is not the news they wanted to hear. This is not the timeline for the transition they wanted to see, and that they are going to press the company to, to make this delay as short as possible. Have you been in contact with the federal government on any of this? Uh, what, what would you like to hear from them at this point? I think that that is an excellent starting point. I'm sure the provincial government here in Ontario will be saying the same, that they expect uh, Ford Motor Company to live up to its commitments to Canadian workers right now. Uh, we are saying the same thing. And obviously, uh, everything that it, part of the discussions uh, that we'll be having with the company is not just around income support, but what else can happen here and how can we look at uh, shortening these timelines. All of those things uh, have to be part of these conversations. Lana Payne, National President of Unifor, we appreciate the time. Thank you, David.